you think you know about living healthy and listen up because our next guest wrote the book on it. Please welcome the author of Medical Myths That Can Kill You and the 101 Truths That Will Save, Extend, and Improve Your Life, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> The information in this book can can do all those things can really improve our and life. For a cyberchondriac like you, yes, perfect. I am. I, I have I have an ailment. I go online, I look it up, and then I diagnose myself. You have cancer. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I, who knows? I probably do. Uh, talk about how this book is going to help us. <laughs> Talk about how it's going to help you us. You know, I, the myths we carry into our doctor's mm -hmm. offices and the myths our doctors carry from generation to generation right. derail us. And I think right now when medicine has never been so complicated and the health system isn't necessarily your friend, the more you know, mm -hmm. the more literate you are, and the more you can debunk myths, the healthier you're going to be. Well, there's a lot of information out there. One of those myths that we want to talk about mm -hmm. in informational uh, topics is sugar in kids, yep. which everybody's getting on this thing, yep. you know, eliminate sugar with kids. What's your thought on it? Big that? myth. If you oh. think hyperactivity is caused by sugar, it's not. Are you sure? Because uh, I give yeah, Grace a cookie and she's My son climbs crazy. up the wall after a popsicle. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's study after study after study, not a link. But what happens really? is there's this associative link because kids go to the birthday party, they bounce all around, they get excited, they're cupcakes, and there's been this like association. But over and over and over again, if you control one group of kids with no sugar and the other group with sugar and you okay. put them in the same environment, same no hyperactivity. Really? Okay. okay, so there are other things we need to be looking at. I read this other uh, other factoid in here that earwax is somehow linked to breast cancer. Yeah. And I always have clogged ears and I have a family history of breast cancer. So now I'm totally upset because I think, great, my earwax and now the family history, I'm totally Elizabeth getting breast Lillard, cancer. You're so <laughs> it's fascinating information. It gets me very excited. The kind of earwax you have can predict whether you're going to get breast cancer. And here's why. Yeah. The breast and the ear canal are both modified sweat glands. Okay. That's what they are. So, so if are you sweating. have, okay. yeah. <laughs> so if you have moist, gooey wax in your middle-aged woman. Don't take it out. <laughs> Because yeah. well, you, you, your ears get stopped up, and your doctor should tell you. Every That's time me. you see a doctor. When and they look in your ears, is that what yeah. they're looking at? They would know. They, they would know. You look at it on the nap. Yeah. Let me ask a yeah. question, because not that we're talking about anybody that we know. Yes. But what do you think of people who use the web to self-diagnose themselves? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's a good starting point, Elizabeth. Right. But I wouldn't rely on that alone. Because, no. I mean, you, no. if you Google anything, yeah. you're going to come up with a laundry list that will scare you to death. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, oh God, go ahead. No, I was just going to say with the earwax, how much is too much? Because I clean my ears every day. You know, I love don't doing clean your ears every day. Every day. No, no, that's a good really? no. Don't dig in there. No. Like, yeah. don't dig you, in there with a the Q-tip. Yeah. Don't do that. Oh, that feels so good with that ear. <laughs> So you go deaf. Yeah. 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 I know, because yeah. you know the earwax is a little bit like the lubrication in your car. Maybe. It keeps you from getting infections. You yeah. want earwax in there, so don't well, clean every day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that was it's hanging it's out in your then sculptable, then it's not so good. Nancy, yeah. what do you think when you go to the doctor? Because you're gonna, we're gonna read this book, yeah. and we're gonna find out a lot of stuff. But when you go to the doctor, what is the one question you should always ask your doctor? Is Are you willing one? to be my partner? Because Are you, you know what? To be my partner? Yeah. And I mean that in a really serious way that trickle-down medicine doesn't work. You want a doctor who will listen to you, and mm -hmm. I think that is the short falling of doctors. We don't listen enough. Well, I wanna do, get, I wanna, I'm sorry, I just wanted to okay. ask this question. The other thing is when you go to the doctor, what's the number one thing patients don't do? Yeah. Patients don't prepare. What patients do mean, don't right? prepare. What? First of all, if you think there really is something wrong, take somebody with you, because you only hear half of what you think you're supposed to. Especially all that earwax. Right. Yeah, especially all that rest. And you know what? You know, I wanted the list. I have a very good friend, Dr. Susan Love, who's this renowned breast yeah, cancer surgeon. You've yeah. had her on the show before. She says, take a tape recorder. If your doctor is unwilling to have you turn on a tape recorder, it's not a doctor who's confident enough yeah. to treat you. That's and good. if you don't have that, you take a piece of paper and a pencil I because you've got to take tell notes. tell the truth, right? right. Come in well, with don't lie to your preacher and don't lie to your doctor yeah. because if you're still smoking, we're going to figure it out. It's not lying. They leave it out. Yeah. People leave Simple. things out. And you know the two yeah. things people lie about? The kind of sex they're having and their cigarette smoking history. That's mm -hmm. what they lie about because we're embarrassed. Right. Okay. So tell the truth. Tell mm -hmm. nothing but the truth. <laughs> what about now that the summer's heating up? You say meat and grilling. What's the what's the charred meat that? has carcinogens on that char. And if you oh. eat grilled meat all the time with that charred, oh, overburnt. It's got that taste, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, but it's, you know what? It. it has carcinogens in it. It can increase your cancer risk. That's why in some third world countries where people really do cook all the time over open pits, mm -hmm. you see a higher risk of cancer. Oh, this Let's go inside for a minute. Quickly, medicine yeah. cabinet. What should we be doing about that? Best way to ruin your medicines is to put it in your medicine cabinet. Oh, Stick it in the hallway closet instead because 
that change in heat and humidity in your uh, bathroom will ruin your medicines. Okay. So in the hallway. Okay. So yeah. we need to make some adjustments. Yeah. You your book is vegetables. excellent. Doctor. Vegetables. Vegetables oh, are good you know, to grill. I think just really meat. is a okay. Yeah. You just can't consistently grill red meat so it's charred and mm -hmm. eat it. It's like everything else. We, in we, moderation, right. you'll be fine. We obviously have a lot of questions for you, and that's no, why you are no. staying with us. Thankfully, Dr. Nancy Schneiderman is staying with us, and we will be right back with more medical myths and answers. Don't go away. Finding out the truth behind medical myths from Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Okay, so I have a question for yep. you. We're taking Jeffrey back uh, to a family reunion uh, in North Carolina, and there's mosquitoes everywhere. What is it about mosquitoes? Well, globally, the female mosquito may be the deadliest animal on Earth. There are 300 million cases of malaria a year. 1.2 oh, million nice. kids die, but not mm. in this country. That's why there are mosquito net programs that work in other countries. In this country, we worry about the West Nile virus, mm -hmm. but what I keep let a mosquito get between me and a family reunion? No. Okay, That's so. why there's spray and long shirts and... Even though silica. those are kind of carcinogenic themselves. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, but it beats, you know, getting West Nile virus. So I think, yeah. yeah, I'd still spray my kid. And remember, mosquitoes are out more in the evening. Right. So stab during Stay the day and then come inside. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. You know, every year I do a benefit for ovarian cancer research uh, right. fund. I just did one at Caroline's about, about a month ago. Right. There is not really a good test for that. Why is that? And what's the one test you should always take? You know, ovarian cancer, yeah. uh, if you talk to women who've had it, they are mad that there's not a pap test for it. There's not a mammogram right. for it. It is really this constellation of symptoms, and it's pretty lousy. And if you're bloating, you're it's crank, uh, some abdominal pain, very nebulous symptoms, feeling full or having indigestion, if those things last for longer than two weeks... Well, if a, there, are, there are tests that you can follow, something called CA-125 that you can get after, but it's not a great screening it test. It positives, oh. that test. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's not a great screening what test. What is the one test you should make sure that you get? A pelvic. Yeah. And your doctor should feel your ovaries between both hands and in a post-menopausal woman. If your doctor can feel your ovary, it's abnormal until proven otherwise. Okay. okay. So, so if you if you are postmenopausal, if he can feel this, okay. that it, it needs it's then not you a really good. really have to have further testing, but the blood test, right. too many false positives, okay. as you said. Can well, I? Now, oh, I'm sorry. Can, yeah. All right. I just wanted to know. You know, there was a young boy I saw uh, recently who they thought had who they thought was autistic. Mm -hmm. uh, they then discovered that he had seizures because they took him to the doctor and they did all of these. Uh, x-rays yeah, on him right and stuff and so they've given him the seizure medicine and he's a completely different child mm. is this something that parents should be aware of if they're not sure what's wrong with their child what's the best steps well, i think we're starting to see this broad spectrum of illnesses that come out under the autism banner and what you have to do is you have to make sure that diagnosis is absolutely right and that means you exhaust hearing tests and behavioral tests and seizure tests tests, you know, with, with EEGs and brain scans, mm -hmm. and only after everything else has been eliminated, do you sit down and say, okay, I'm willing to accept this. Now, what are we going to do for mm -hmm. early intervention mm -hmm. and step on it? Mm -hmm. and, and most of us have autism in our families. I don't, I think really? this is a little bit, I think mm -hmm. this is a little bit like, you know, 15, 20 years ago, nobody talked about cancer, right. and now we all know somebody. I think we are starting to recognize that there are elements in autism in broad spectrum in families. On the Asperger's uh, continuum. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And then there are, you know, the geniuses on one end, and you start to look at your family history and go, oh my gosh, I have this, I have this. Mm -hmm. But autism remains one of our biggest challenges for young I, parents. I had a question for you, uh, you know, because I'm always getting headaches and I always think it's a brain tumor <laughs> when I have my, I do, I, yeah. when I, the pain in my eyes. It's probably allergies. Yeah, so what? Or that wig. Yeah. Oh, is it <laughs> <laughs> It's tight all the time. So do you, do you think uh, the headaches are... Most are, time headaches are nothing more than just simple headaches, okay. not brain tumors. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for coming. You're we just love you. you. Everybody in our audience is going home Good. with Nancy's book.